In a previous video, we talked about the upcoming features of Luminar AI. We anticipated that if these features were actually about to come, the way we see it, it will totally change the game and how we edit our photos. However, today, I have something real. We have our hands on the earliest beta version of Luminar AI. It is still an extremely developmental early stage though. So today we're going to focus on the portrait retouching features of Luminar AI. We'll look at some new and also existing features that use artificial intelligence and see how they shape up our portraits. We have a lot of examples for you and also a full retouch at the end. So without any further ado, let's get started. Life is for living. Let's see magical world of Luminar this time and this is the Luminar AI interface. Now keep in mind as I told you this is a developmental stage so it might look different for you in the release version and it can be even better. As you can see this looks absolutely futuristic. So you have catalog where you have catalog of all images then you have the templates. We'll talk about this later. This is the edit tab and this is the export tab. So how do you really import your images in Luminar? You can also import a single image by clicking on the plus and choosing edit single image or you can add a whole folder. So let's go ahead and add a folder. And before we do that, by the way, according to the image that is open right there, the AI automatically suggests you some amazing <laughs> templates. Have a look at it. Big city lights, sunsets. You can simply click on them and choose your favorite. We'll get to this later. This is a super AI filter that really does most of your job. All right. So simply click on the plus button right over there and choose add folder with images. Locate the folder that you want to add. So I'm going to click on this one and choose select folder. So here we have our examples for today's video. By the way, did you notice how fast that was? Keep in mind, this is going to get even faster with the release version. First of all, let's talk about the super cool Iris AI feature. By the way, this is a brand new edition. And this is one of the features that really got me excited. It allows you to add different color Iris to the eyes and also add some shine and enhances eyes in brilliant ways. Let's take a look at it. And by the way, if you are interested in Luminar and do wish to pre-order it, do check the link in the description for more details. So let's open our very first example, this adorable little young superstar. And we're going to try to apply some Iris AI to it. Let's zoom in. And by the way, if you move to templates, it already suggests you some amazing portrait templates out there, like Easy Portraits, Essence, Savannah. You can just try them later. We'll get to that later. Now let's go to edit directly, the edit tab. And here for the Iris AI, let's go to the portrait section right there. You'll definitely find it inside face AI. And then let's go to eyes. And inside of that, you have some Iris sliders, right? So let's zoom in first. So you can zoom in from right here as well, or the simple controller command plus. So I'm going to zoom in 100%. And let's move to her eyes. And here's the great part. You can choose any color iris you want. So right here, you have the original iris. Just click on the drop down. I can choose blue, brown, green, gray, hazel. So for this example, let's go for hazel. And let's see. Now, this already looks brilliant. So let's zoom in even more. So let's zoom in 200% to see them better. Look how realistic they look by default. You can also choose the crazy ones like cat or owl. So these are some uh, fun ones right over there. So you can also go with gray. That also looks great. You can go with brown or blue. Blue looks interesting as well. But I'm going to go with hazel on this one. Now you can control the iris visibility. Think of it like an opacity slider for the iris, but it's way more advanced because if you take the slider all the way to the left, it doesn't bring back the original iris. That would be too immature. But for this example, so I'm going to keep it at about this level. Now you can also add some flare to the iris. Remember in Photoshop, we used to add some kicker light by using a curves adjustment layer and adding a little dab on the opposite side of where the light was falling. It's the same thing. So you can increase that and have a look. It just adds that beautiful kicker light. So I'm going to go with this value. And there you go. Looks interesting. You can also enhance the eyes even more with the eye enhancer. So simply increase that. And there you go. Have a look at how the reflections pop up right? Let's take a look at the before and after. So this is the button for before and after. So here is the before and here is the after. Just look at the difference, my friend. Amazing. Now this definitely looks too much. So when you zoom out, so we can just take down the iris visibility a little bit and then the iris flare. Uh, probably I think I enhanced the eyes too much. So let's take it down. But look at how much depth it adds to the eye. It just is 
so beautiful. Look at this. So that was Iris AI, my friend. You can choose any color iris you want. And the best part is you still keep the reflection in the eyes. The next feature we're going to talk about is Skin AI. And the way it finds blemishes and automatically removes them still boggles my mind. Let's take a look at this example, right? So let's go to edit section right over there. And then again, we'll directly come to portrait section. Right now, the face AI was already open from the previous example. So let's close that and let's open Skin AI right there. And wait for it, it is just a checkbox. If you just check Skin Defects Removal AI, see what happens. All the major blemishes gone automatically and it still keeps it natural. Isn't that amazing? On top of that, if you want to add softness to the skin, you can do that as well by increasing the amount right there. This makes the skin soft. I wouldn't go all the way to the right because then it makes it too soft. Let's keep it natural and keep the value somewhere about right here. You don't want to add too much softness when retouching male portraits. Now let us talk about a new addition and this AI feature is called Body AI. And the reason why it's special is because no matter what position the subject might be, it still works. It still allows you to add or reduce weight from the subject. Let's take a look at this example. Manually liquefying in Photoshop can be time consuming. But right here, you can simply click on body AI. Now it is again inside of the portrait section and then you can reduce weight or simply add weight. That's totally up to you. And it sure does work with any position. Let's take a look at this example. He is standing a little bit to the side, right? Let's go to the edit panel, edit tab right there. And then I'm gonna take the body AI all the way to the left. Let's add some weight to it, add some muscle to it. So this is the normal one. And if we take it all the way to the left, and the great part is it did not deform the arms. So here is the before and here is the after. If you were to apply liquify to it and you were not very careful, it could deform the arms, but this does a pretty amazing job. Now, let me quickly show you the composition AI feature that suggests you different crops for your image based on the golden rules of photography. Let's take a look at this photo. So all you have to do is to come back to the essentials tab in the edit section right there, edit panel, I must say, and click on the essentials section if that is not already selected, and then click on composition AI. All you have to do is to simply click composition AI, and it automatically does the job, suggests you a crop. If you're happy with it, all you have to do is to hit enter. And there you go. Have a look at this. Such a nice crop, isn't it? On top of that, you can also straighten it automatically. So if you open up Composition AI here, you can simply click on in here and it automatically straightens that as well. Now it is finally time for us to move to a full retouch session from beginning to end and look how fast Luminar AI is or how good it does. So here we have an image and we're going to use the brand new feature called templates. So all you have to do is to go to templates and it automatically suggests edits for this photo. So it already suggested analog, essence and also lifestyle. So let's try that. Let's click on lifestyle and we're going to probably try this one looks a little warm. Let's click on this one and it will automatically edit your photo and look at it. It's pretty darn good. So here is the before and here is the after. It does most of the heavy lifting for you. Now keep in mind, you can always change and customize things. All you have to do is to go to edit and from there you can customize things right there. If you think the exposure is too low, you can still customize it. Now let's get back to templates. I want to try something else. So apart from the suggested ones using AI, you can also scroll down and use something of your own. So I want to try this experimental pack right there. There are some really good ones here. So let's try gold flame. Look at the dreamy look in this. So here is the before, here is the after. That looks fantastic as well. Let's try celebrate. Wow, just wow, I'm staying with it, really. Not only the flare, but the grading on the image looks great to me. And by the way, you can change the flare if you want to. You can also use something from your own personal collection. Let me show you how. So let's go to edit. Now inside of that, you can go to local masking section. You can add basic adjustments, skin AI, face AI, and then just add local mask to it. As I told you, AI is automatic, but it gives you the flexibility to add or remove it from certain areas. And also add AI filters on top if you want extras. So let's go to texture right there and you can simply turn it off. You can delete it by clicking on the cross or you can just simply turn it off if you probably want it later. And let's go ahead and add some more texture. 
I'm gonna add some personal texture right there. Just click on load texture, locate your overlays folder. And from here, I'm gonna go ahead and choose overlay two and click on open. And it looks pretty good, but it looks dull. You know why? Because the right blend mode has not been applied. So let's change the blend mode from normal to screen. So in the advanced settings right there, change the blend mode to screen. And there you go. Looks pretty darn good. Now you can increase the brightness. So I'm gonna go with probably this much brightness looks pretty good. But at the top, this is a little disturbing. So we can always erase it. Choose the eraser right there. And I'm gonna decrease the opacity and just take it away slowly and gradually from right there. We took a little away from there and there you go. So here is the before, here is the after, makes a massive difference. And here is the overall before, overall after. Now you can stop right here if you want, but if you're like me who likes to tweak everything, let's start from the essentials. So in the essential, let's start with light. And here I think the exposure is too much. So let's bring it down a little bit by 0.2. Two. Also, this has my favorite tool and you already know what that is, curves, right? So you just can scroll down and go to curves and let's modify it a little bit. So I'm gonna make it a little brighter in the darks and that looks about right. And also I wanna just add more shadows. So let's take it a little bit to the left, just a touch. There you go. Next we have Structure AI right over there. Now it's not already added by default in this template, but the way it works is that it uses AI to add structure to your photos, add more details. So in this case, if you take it to the right, it'll just add more details, which in this example might not look right. You wanna make it dreamy, so why not take it to the opposite side? So instead of taking it to the right, let's take it to the left to make it more soft and dreamy. This much is good. Also, we want to add some sharpening. And what is sharpening? It is simply adding details. So it must be in the details tab right there. So let's go to the details. And there you have sharpening. So let's go ahead and increase that. And by the way, it's great to be zoomed in at 100 or 200% when you're sharpening. So let's move in. Usually, I would suggest 100%. Let's just increase sharpening and see how that looks. Now it looks pretty sharp, but I feel we need to change the radius of sharpening a little bit, which is usually the thickness of the edge. So let's go to sharpening masking right there and simply increase the sharpening radius. Just look at the difference. It looks much more sharpened. Also the skin gets too sharp. We can soften that later, that'll come later. But for right now, it's pretty darn good. Now to add more attention to it, the subject, let's use vignetting. Let's open the vignette tab. And the great thing here is that it lets you choose the subject and add vignetting around it. It is not a generic vignette. So you can click on choose subject and just click on the face maybe. And then you can control the amount. Probably I'm gonna go with 32, 33 and let's just decrease the size a bit. Let's take the amount all the way to the left so that we can see how much size we want. So about this much looks good. And then take the amount up. So about, let's go with 44. So here's the before, here's the after. Really just adds focus to it, the subject. Now let's come down to some creative effects and you will find that inside of the creative section right there. So let's click on in there and let's try mystical. The best way to learn any slider is to simply play with it. Let's increase that. And as you can see, it adds a brilliant dreamy effect right over there. Have a look, here's the before. And here's the after. I would definitely keep it. And by the way, you can always play with shadows and smoothness and see what works best for you. Usually, default works just fine. You can also add glow if you want. Maybe just a little bit of it. You can also change the type of glow by just choosing from these drop down. There is soft focus. There is glow. I'm just going to go with soft focus. Looks very interesting. By the way, I do feel like the face is just too bright. Maybe there's a little bit of face light added and we need to reduce that. So let's go to the portrait section. And in the face AI section, as you can see, there are some face light added, so you can reduce that. That just reduces the brightness, but I think it looked good. This area just looks too bright for me. How do I reduce that? First of all, let's increase the face light. And then you can always go to local masking right there, and then you can add something called basic. And here we can simply decrease the highlights, and then we can also try decreasing the exposure, just a touch, and then simply take the brush, not the eraser, just the brush, and dab on that area or paint on that area. That'll work just right there. Let's decrease the brush size and increase the opacity and dab one more time. 
there you have it. You have successfully taken care of that highlight. Now let's get back to the creative section. And I feel like maybe a little bit of film grain can help us. So let's click on that. Let's increase the amount. The grain just looks amazing. So let's zoom in to 50%. And take a look now. Wonderful, isn't it? And by the way, you can only notice it if you're watching this video in 4K. You can also control the size and roughness. So the size is fine. You can just increase the size. I'm just increasing so that you are able to see it because YouTube compresses everything. So you can also change the roughness to whatever you like. This just makes it more moody and interesting. Time for us to come down to the portrait section right there. You can slim the face if you want to. So I'm just going to slim it just a little bit. You can also use Iris AI right there. So let's open up the eyes tab. And then again, I'm going to choose Hazel. I just love that. Wow, it looks too dangerous. Let's decrease the eye visibility. It's too much. And then we can always add a little bit of flair. You can also enlarge the eyes a little bit if you wish. That just makes it a little more appealing sometimes, but don't go too far. Please refrain from changing who the person actually is. But if you want to do that, you can. And definitely, we just love the eye enhancer. Let's take it to the right. Look at how the reflection of the yellow lights become more visible. She doesn't have any dark circles, but we can still just try the dark circle removal. It doesn't make sense right here. She doesn't have dark circles. Now, I want to make the lip color match with that of the dress. And yes, you can do that. Let's open up the mouth section right there and simply increase lip saturation. Just add saturation. You can add some lip redness right there. And you can also darken the lips a little bit. If there's teeth visible, you can just brighten it using the teeth whitening slider right there. Now let's come to skin AI if you want to soften the skin even more. But in this case, it's already soft. We can try increasing the amount just a little bit, but it was already a little bit there done with the template by default. So it's not really required. Trust me, if you just keep going like this, you won't be able to stop because there are so many great filters right there. Let's take a look at the before and after. I'm just going to stop right here. So here is the before and here is the after. Tell me that's not drastic. It's crazy. So just a few sliders and AI, it makes a super cool image. Even if you just stop at one of the templates and just do very minor adjustments like exposure, it's more than enough for most cases. It sure is worth keeping an eye on what features or improvements we'll see in the final release version that you and I get. But here's my workflow. If you ask me how I would retouch portraits using Luminar, well, I would use that as a plugin for Photoshop. Yes, it will be available as a plugin for Photoshop or Lightroom. Here's what I'll do. I will still do dodging and burning. I just love dodging and burning. It's an art. I don't want to just restrict skin smoothing to a slider. If you have a lot of images, that's absolutely fine. That would be excellent. But if I'm doing a magazine cover and if I'm dodging and burning for four or five hours, definitely it won't be any match for doing skin smoothing with just one slider, right? It just doesn't make sense. You're just painting something for four hours and you can't do it with one slider. So here's what I will do. If the image has a major distraction that needs to be fixed or removed, I will remove that with Photoshop. Then I might do my dodging and burning that I really love. No color grading, no tone adjustment, none of that. Just simple dodging and burning. Then on a new layer, I'll just merge everything and convert that into a smart object and then apply the Luminar AI filter to it. Why? Because we can change any values later. And the great part is Luminar AI works for smart objects. I really can't wait to try this as a Photoshop plugin. And what I love the most is that this is a solution based workflow. You get the image edited the way you imagine. And if you're having no ideas, templates are always there. To help. I hope I could show you something new. Thanks for watching this video. And again, if you're interested in Luminar AI, do check the links in the description. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.